The Confederate soldiers are close. There have been many skirmishes and raiding of homes on the outskirts of the city. And Mother is worried for our safety. My name is Mary Virginia Wade, but my friends call me Ginny. I am 20 years old. I live here on Breckenridge Street in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania with my mother, my two younger brothers, and our boarder Isaac, who is a six-year-old boy and crippled. My mother and I work as seamstresses, but lately we are kept pretty busy repairing the soldiers' uniforms. Mother has been staying at my sister's house because Georgia just gave birth. Today is July 1st, 1863, and I do believe a full-on battle has begun. There is a lot of fighting just outside of town. Mother has summoned us to come stay with her at my sister's house on Baltimore Street which is on the east side of Cemetery Hill. I have taken my youngest brother and Isaac to George's house and have returned home for a few of my belongings before I head back. I grab two things that I hold most dear to me. My little change purse and the picture of my childhood sweetheart, which I keep inside my change purse for safekeeping. Here is my other picture of my sweetheart, and now my fiancé, Johnston Hastings Skelly Jr., but he's known as Jack to his friends. My sister is Georgia Wade McLennan, and she has just given birth to a precious baby boy, Lewis Kenneth. This is a picture of my sister, a dear friend, and me. Mother thinks we will be safer here because George's house is a brick duplex and sits on the edge of Cemetery Hill. I have been keeping busy doing chores, feeding soldiers and filling their canteens with water as the defeated and wounded enemy troops make their way down through town. I stand alongside the road to offer fresh bread and water. My heart breaks for these men and I pray that my loved one is safe somewhere today. This is day two of this horrible battle, and we stay in the parlor now. Friends and family brought Georgia's bed down a few days ago for her delivery, and I'm glad. It is easier to keep an eye on her and the baby with them downstairs. The soldiers keep coming in and telling us to leave this house. We are literally caught in the middle of both armies. Oh, I pray the good Lord keeps us safe, as a ten-pound shell hit the house, passing the roof into the wall separating the two residences, and finally embedding itself into the far wall on the south side of the house. Fortunately, the shell did not detonate. We were lucky this time. This morning, July 3rd, 1863. We have been woken to the wounded Union soldiers' screams and moans. How will we get through this war? I have seen things no human being should ever see. The sights and sounds are absolutely horrifying, and I would not be surprised if this battle is described as the bloodiest battle ever. Around 7 a.m., Heavy sniper fire shattered all the windows on the north side of the house. One bullet came to rest only inches from Georgia and baby Lewis. I finally prayed, if there is anyone in this house that is to be killed today, I hope it is me, as Georgia has a little baby. The gunfire doesn't stop, and the house is caught right in the middle of sniper fire. We are scared, but holding it together. Those men can be brave, so can we. It is now 8.30 in the morning, and the battle continues to rage on. I have decided to bake more bread, because there is going to be a lot of wounded men in need of nourishment. Standing here in this kitchen, I can't help but think of Jack and missing him so much, 
and praying that he is safe. I slip his picture in my apron pocket to keep him near me.